everyone. My name is Richard Klafke and I work with the Nature Conservancy of Canada here in southeastern British Columbia. Today we're out on the Wycliffe Conservation Complex, which is located southeast of Kimberley and north of Cranbrook. The conservation complex spans over 1,100 hectares and is comprised of 23 parcels of land owned and managed for conservation by three entities. The three entities are the Nature Trust of British Columbia, the Nature Conservancy of Canada, and the Ministry of Forest, Lands and Natural Resource Operations and Rural Development, or FLINRO. The conservation complex spans all the way from the St. Mary's River and the riparian aspen forest there, north up to what we call the Buttes, which is north of the Wycliffe Prairie. Uh, the Buttes are made up of Douglas fir, lodgepole pine, ponderosa pine, and larch stands, with various pockets of wetlands and a Luke Creek runs through the, the middle of the conservation complex. Williamson sapsuckers inhabit old growth larch forest and they need large diameter snags for nesting trees and coarse woody debris for ants that they can forage on to feed their nestlings. Over the past hundreds of years, Forests like this have been lost due to land conversion and other human disturbances, firewood cutting and, and the like. So, you know, you can see the forest ingrowth behind me and encroachment uh, resulting from our landscape level disturbance. And we've stopped putting out forest fires and the small trees are growing in and the large trees are not catching up fast enough to provide good Williamson sapsucker habitat. So the project came about after the three conservation partners got together and thought, what can we do to enhance or benefit Williamson sapsuckers on the Wycliffe Conservation Complex? We know that they occurred adjacent to the Nature Conservancy of Canada's parcels, both to the west and to the north in the past, and the nesting sites have been documented there. The outcome of this project has resulted in the entire Wycliffe Conservation Complex being assessed for Williamson sapsucker habitat. The assessment revealed that only a small area was suitable for potentially Williamson sapsucker uh, habitat enhancements. And you know, habitat enhancements have never been accomplished for Williamson sapsuckers in British Columbia that we know of. It's usually to mitigate forest harvesting to maintain Williamson sapsucker habitat. Well, we now realize that the conservation complex is, is lacking old growth snags, large coarse woody debris, and a suitable open understory for Williamson sapsuckers to forage in. We were also able to obtain a prescription for approximately 60 hectares of the conservation complex on the north side of one of the buttes that we should be able to do some small uh, forest thinning in the understory to mimic frequent fire that would maintain the open story understructure in, a, in the larch stand. So the benefits to wildlife, fish and ecosystems resulting from this project will be that we now know that there's only small areas suitable for Williamson sapsuckers across the entire conservation complex. We can focus some efforts there to start the trajectory of getting habitat suitable for Williamson sapsuckers maybe decades from now and you know now's the time to start for that. The resulting short-term benefit will be that mimicking uh, a frequent stand maintaining fire will also benefit other species at risk and other native species that evolved in that type of habitat where fire was a more frequent uh, interval process happening on the landscape. So the main three collaborators on this project was the Ministry of Forest, Land, Natural Resource Operations and Rural Development, the Nature Trust of BC and the Nature Conservancy of Canada. The three organizations came together and worked on getting prescription completed and, and the whole area assessed by Les Gayug of the Okanagan Wildlife Consulting. He's worked quite a bit on Williamson sapsuckers in the Okanagan and Merritt areas. So some lessons learned from the project is that throughout the assessment and the prescriptions that were developed is that we know now that there's very few large larch left on the landscape and it's going to take likely decades for us to start turning around the habitat, do some forest thinning, mimic natural fire to get the habitat suitable again for Williamson sapsuckers. We'll also need to provide large coarse woody debris piles so that ants can invade them and then the Williamson sapsuckers can then forage on the ants to provide food for their nest. Another lesson that we learned was that Les conducted some climate change modeling and it revealed that 
the suitable sites that are now inhabited with larch may actually get drier and hotter and become more suitable for ponderosa pine, thus reducing the amount of suitable Williamson sapsucker habitat. We hope that we can take these changes now and by providing some enhancement for Williamson sapsucker, not only benefit potentially their future use, but other species that are adapted frequent stand maintaining fires by thinning out the forest understory, promoting large diameter trees to grow on the landscape. So I think one of the, the big highlights of the project is that by doing the assessment now and the prescriptions on the small areas that less found suitable for Williamson sapsuckers, we'll be able to focus our efforts on where strategically we can make a difference for Williamson sapsuckers.